How's everybody doing today? Hopefully everybody's having a fantastic day. Before we get started, hi, my name is Teresa and I welcome you all to my channel. If you're new here and you like unboxings, you like getting ready with me with some scary ghost stories, even do Monday Mess Ladies Collab. I do makeup try-ons on here. I do a walk in history. I do Fun Fact Friday. I do collabs on here. Um, sometimes I do giveaways on here, and guys, I do more. I do random more than just beauty on this channel. Now, if you're interested in all the content that I just said, then please are considering hitting the subscribe button down here on the bottom. When you hit the subscribe button, there will be a bell. And when you hit the bell, you'll be notified of when I upload my new video. So today, guys, is get ready with me in some scary ghost stories. Woohoo! Yes! Yes, today you're going to get ready with me. And um, I'm going to show you the palettes that I'm using. And I'm going to show you the book that I am reading from, which I am almost done with. It's the West Virginia Ghost Storybook. And I do have the Georgia one. And as soon as I'm done with this book, then I will be starting that book, uh, the Georgia Ghost Storybook, which I am quite excited. So today I'm using two different palettes because I want to do like a Halloween look um, since it is the month of Halloween. So I thought it would be cool to use um, the Huda Beauty Emerald Obsessions. It has greens in it and blacks and it's just really, and golds and silvers, just really a gorgeous palette. And um, so I want to work with this palette and also... Um, I'm wanting to work with the, uh, it's called Love Live Sunshine O Girls Rule Palette. And this is what it looks like inside. Now this one has like my purples and reds and all the good colors that you could use for the fall time. So these are the two palettes that I will be working with. Um, I had to move some stuff out of my way here. I do apologize about that. Um, and the book that I have been reading is called West Virginia Ghost Stories, Legends, and Haunts. This is the book right here. Um, been some interesting stories that I've read. The last story that I read on here was the, um, uh, Hatfields and McCoy story. And that was a very long story. <laughs> and so I'm going to go ahead and read you some of these out of here. And so let's go ahead and get started. So what I like to do is prime my eyes first. This is called Stuck on You, which I have been using. I absolutely love this uh, Stuck on You by the Beauty Crop. And it's just a little tan cream inside of here so if you see me looking away i have a mirror over here too and i'm going to use you guys and all kinds of mirrors <laughs> um so i just put some on my finger and i'm just gonna put that all over my eyelid here so how's everybody doing today I hope everybody's having a fantastic day so far. My day has been good so far. Just trying to fight this allergy, cold, whatever is going on. I don't know. Just feeling a little bit under the weather. But, you know that time of the year I usually get a cold or a sinus infection or something so. <laughs> so all over my eye right there all right so I did that all over the eye. So what I'm going to do next is I like to use a light base. And I'm just going to do the all over eye with the light color. And the color I'm going to use is called um, Pure. This color right here. Like a beige color. 
So I'm going to take we're going to see what kind of look I can come up with. We're going to need to use this brush right here. There is fallout, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to go all over my eyelid here. By no means, I, if you're new here, I am not a professional to put makeup on. This is how I put makeup on. <laughs> or eyeshadow, I should say. Do my other eye. like that just a, a base all right so now I'm gonna do the crease of my eye um, I'm thinking I might do a green for the crease of my eye here uh, let's see let's do green I'm going to try to use this um, minty color green right here in the crease of my eye. So the brush that I'm using for that is this little brush right here. And I'm just going to go into the crease of my eye. I might have to build it up just a little bit. Just like that. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. And then the same thing over here. Sorry, my cat is knocking everything down <laughs> for some reason I can never get my eyes even because I'm left-handed I'm so used to using you know doing this eye but this eye I don't know, but I'll fix it eventually. But that is a start right there. If you can see that. All right, so let's go ahead and read a story real quick. And then we'll do some more of my eyes. All right, I can find where I left off at. Okay. I left off um, on this next story. It's called The Hatfield Tunnel Creeping Crawler. And it actually takes um, in Pike County, Kentucky, but Kentucky and uh, West Virginia are very close states. And this is what that tunnel looks like right here. It says, The expansion of the Norfolk and Western Railway in the late 1800s included many parts of the southern West Virginia with the main focus of getting to the rich coal found here. The entire line was finished on November 12, 1892, with the completion of the Hatfield Tunnel just outside Mate Juan. Passerby have seen a ghostly form near the tunnel's entrance crawling on all fours. 
between the rails still used by trains. No one knows who it could be. A miner who died digging through its core or a train man killed in a wreck. This tunnel is no stranger to deaths during the construction of the tunnel. Miners died. There is little more than a small cemetery to mark their existence at, at all on the Sleep Mountain side. The tunnel had its, un, had its usual deaths like locals cutting through it in 1904, 27-year-old Elias Hatfield, freshly pardoned from jail and ne newly married to a coal operator's daughter, was killed walking with Finn. During 1901, floods sw flood swept through West Virginia and the tunnel became a trap for the bodies piling up on the tug fork. That year, the water rose so quickly at one point they found a dead horse and a dead rider with his feet still stuck in the stirrups. And in a little box, it says the region from Ennis to Davie, 43 miles, is completely in ruins. Hundreds of mine mules can be seen in heaps intermingled with human bodies. A report has reached here that 15 bodies are lodged in a drift at Hatfield Tunnel, 20 miles east of this here. Marietta Daily Leader, June 27, 1901. And then there was the train wreck, it says in this little box. The North Folk and Western Railroad is still clinging to the old saying that wrecks come in threes. Less than 10 days ago, there was a dead-end collision at Hatfield Tunnel in Mingo County, which brought instant death to two engineers and two firemen. The Big Sandy News, December 18, 1903. The tunnel is no stranger to death. It is almost like a magnet drawing people into its grasp and perhaps spitting them back out as ghosts. If you hap across the tracks while wandering the Hatfield McCoy territory, watch out for the trains still bustling through the tunnels at great speeds. But also keep a wary gaze out for the dead. Well, a ghost. It might get you too. Ooh! No one wants to get me. I don't know if I want to go to that tunnel. That was creepy. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and read one more. It's called The Grave of Octavia Tavia Hatcher, Cemetery Road, Pikeville, Kentucky. Um, and this is what the, the graveyard and the gravestone looks like right here. Creepy looking thing. It says 20 year old Octavia Hatcher died on warm May 2nd day. Blah. I do apologize about that. 20 year old Octavia Hatcher died on a warm May 2nd day in 1891, or so they thought. Married in 1889 to James Hatcher, she has given birth to their first child, Jacob, on January 4th of the same year. Jacob died within hours of being born, and Octavia was distraught over his death. As the months passed, her pain seemed to de deepen, and she became weaker. She fell ill and went into a coma and died. The young woman was buried quickly in the local cemetery to avoid spread of disease. Within a few days, others in the community began to have the same coma-like symptoms. But they eventually awaken. Octavia's love, loving husband, James, felt a horrible realization overcome him. Perhaps his wife had been in a coma, too. Cemetery caretakers immediately exhumed the young woman's body. When workers opened the casket, it was a ghastly sight. Octavia had not died at all. She had ripped the top of the coffin to shreds. Her fingernails were bloodied, and her face was contorted in terror. The family reburied Octavia and her husband built her a new monument above her grave. Over the years, people have reported hearing mewling sounds near the grave. An apparition of Octavia walks through the cemetery and during certain times of the year. Her statue will completely turn so that her back is to the town that ignored the fact she was buried alive. Ooh, and here's a picture of her 
a statue if you could see that. Could you imagine seeing that turning? Not me. That would creep me out. Woo! That's creepy. I'm being buried alive. It says underneath the picture, Octavia Hutcher's grave is in a quiet cemetery above the town of Pikesville, Kentucky. I found this legend when working on the Hatfield McCoy feud ghosts. It was so close to them and so unique. I figured if you were already visiting the area, you would not want to miss this one. Woo, that is creepy. So we're going to stop and on the next story is in Mingo County, West Virginia. It's ghost of Matt Juan, Mate Juan, where to look for hauntings. So what I'll do is um, I'm going to finish up my eye look with you guys. And I'm, then I'm going to get off here. It'll only take you a second. It'll get take me a while because I got to put all my makeup on and look different and then I'll show you the overall look and we'll continue to read maybe one or two more stories so let's go ahead and finish up the eye look all right so I want to do half of a color and half of another color on each eye and I'm going to do on this half this really pretty it says exuberant purple right here that really pretty pretty purple there so I'm going to take I can't see this flat brush right here and I'm just gonna dig into that and it's like a shimmer kind of thing and then I'm just gonna put that right down here on the bottom just in one little corner here I wonder if it would work best if I use my finger. It probably would. It's a really, really pretty purple. And this is just the outer corner of my eye here. Okay, so there's one side. I'm going to do this side. And then I'll touch it up, uh, you know, when I get off here. Okay. It might not be even. Can I go so far? <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to take on the inner corner a darker green, which will be this green right here. And then I'm just going to use my finger for that one. It's a really dark green. And I'm just going to put that right I'll have to clean it up because I had a green eye. 
Do you see that? Oh, Lord. I'm just putting it on that side there. Um, same thing on that side. And just don't mind the ring around my eyes. I am going to fix that, but what do you guys think so far? Is it pretty? <laughs> oh, man. Um, And then up here, I like to put like a little bit of a color, too. So I will go back in with this fluffy brush, and let's do... This pearl one, it's purple right here, shimmer. And then I'm just gonna just put that right up here, like this. Just to give it a little bit of a shimmer, also. Take my other brush. Well, what I did with it, there it is. I'm just gonna buff it out just a little bit. It was a bit too shiny. I'll just blend it in. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Like I said, it'll only take you a second. This is going to take me a while. I'm going to go ahead and touch up my eyes and put on the rest of my makeup and brush out my hair. And I will see you here soon. Hi everybody, I am back. I am back. I touched up my eyes, put my foundation on, my concealer mascara, my eyeliner, my highlighter, my lipstick. So overall, how did my eyes come out? Did they come out good? Is it pretty? Does it look like a Halloween color? Hi. <laughs> and I did something a little different with my lips, so what do you guys think? I did I think I did good I think I did good <laughs> all right guys so this is my overall look and my Halloween look um next get ready with me I am going to do another Halloween look so we'll see if we use some oranges and yellows and all that good stuff so let's go ahead and read another story and then we're gonna wrap things up just one more story all right so The story that I left off was the ghost of Mate Wan, where to look for hauntings. Here we go. Matewood has ghosts. Ooh. It should. It is home to Bloody Battle, where coal miners were pitted against coal companies, ending in ten lying dead in the streets in only a few minutes. And this is the town right here. Creepy looking town with the tracks. Under the picture it says, 
Mate one in its early days in the place where ghost stories are made. A bloody battle occurred right here between the miners and a private detective agency. Baldwin Feltz, working for a coal company. And guys, I'm going to stop there because this is like a four page long story. So I'm going to have you hang guys hanging and wondering what the next part is going to be about. Yes, because I don't want to make this video any too longer and my video might cut out. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to leave you hanging. Stay tuned for that next story. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end it here. I hope everybody had fun and I hope you enjoyed my eye look as it came out. Hopefully it came out nice, pretty, whatever. Um, again, I'm not a professional at makeup. Just love playing with makeup and talking to you guys and reading stories. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And I hope everybody stays blessed. And I hope everybody stays safe no matter where you are. No matter where you're at, please stay safe. And I'll be seeing you all in my next video. Thank you for stopping by, and you have a great day. Thank you. Bye.